Hour. Uh, welcome, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Maybe some places. I don't see anybody who's in East Asia in my list. Thank you for making it. Um, so this is meeting number two of our Gen Dispatch interims. You will notice that this is, in fact, an IETF meeting. So the guys, please do. If you have never read the note well, I hope everybody here has, please do go find it and make sure that you agree with all of the things that you have to follow to participate in this meeting. Uh, the meeting is being recorded. Uh, we're gonna record the WebEx session and use that to go through uh, for later to make sure the notes are good. And if you wanna go take a look at this uh, later, you can. And uh, we do have a virtual blue sheet going right above the where I'm talking to the minutes here. Please go to codymd.ietf.org slash mumble mumble mumble, which is in the chat room and in the WebEx chat, and sign your name. If you would go to the main codymd.ietf.org webpage and sign in using Data Tracker, that would be helpful to all. And what else do I have to say on my little list here? Um, I, I wish I didn't have to, but let me just put a reminder up at the top that during IETF conversations, we're going to try to be respectful, which means we don't try and characterize the motives of other IETF participants. We don't try and characterize IETF participants in general. We're talking to the issues. We're not talking about the people. Just a reminder. Uh, we are going to, we've got, uh, I hopefully, uh, one, two, do I see one of the third authors in the room? Not at the moment. Um, so um, we're going to try and pick up where we left off last time. For those who were not at the last meeting, Please do feel free to, uh, up at the top of the agenda here, ask clarifying questions of authors who are present. Um, and we're not going to go through the presentations. They were very short presentations last time. And I'm going to assume that everybody has read the three documents that we're discussing and know sort of where we are. The discussion itself should be kept on the content um, along the lines of, you know, what are what should the IETF work on, and if so, where that work should take place? We're not trying to solve the problem that each of the documents proposes. We're simply trying to decide how to dispatch it. That's the big issue here. Um, what we're looking for is what would be a satisfactory output for this discussion, whether we think a BCP out of the IETF is desirable, whether we think an informational document, updates to the RFC style guide, changes to the NITS tool, gen art review, um, something similar to the W3C manual. Um, we are, we've already gone through the Jabber logs, the mailing list. We've got a summary that you can read further down here. And there was a nice, um, set of presentations last time. You can take a look at those. They're each just a couple of pages. Um, and yes, did someone have a question or was someone just toggling their mute button? Sorry, okay. Um, and I think that's where I wanna leave it. Uh, we'll start with, does anybody have anything directly for the authors? Uh, maybe they weren't at the last meeting or wanted to clarify with direction. Otherwise, I posted the summary last time to the list. Oh, by the way, um, uh, Francesca is being our minute taker for the meeting. Thank you, Francesca. But if you would stay in Code MD and help her by uh, clarifying what you said, clarifying what you heard others say, uh, the more the merrier as far as adding to the discussion on the Code MD page, uh, for when we do the minutes. So that would be very helpful. Uh, if you take a look at the summary I did for last meeting that I posted to the Gen Dispatch list, 
that would probably be useful uh, to your understanding of what's going on. Uh, but we did have a sense for a couple of things where the outcome of that discussion got to. We'd like to clarify some of those moving forward. We want to understand, we, we got a sense of the room the first time that people started from, oh, I think an AD sponsored document would be good, but seemed to be shifting toward either a BOF or even a little more support for some sort of short working group. Uh, there were definitely some people who thought we shouldn't go forward with a document in this area. Um, we didn't get a good sense um, for whether people were feeling on any of the given choices. I definitely want this one and I can't live with any of the others or this is my preference, but I can live with others. So we're kind of listening up for people to express that a little more clearly today so we can have a takeaway and bring back to the list and see if we can have a starting point. Um, and my, my sense, uh, I said on the list, was that people had problems with each of the documents um, and uh, some people had some things to like about each of the documents as well. Uh, there was some support for other kinds of activities, maybe an IAB program or other discussion venues, but they'd seemed pretty orthogonal to the issue of uh, going forward or not going forward with a document, that those might be separate activities, um, but we still wanna discuss the question of whether a document should go or not. And with that, um, questions for authors or clarifying questions, or agenda bashing for that matter. It's kind of loose. Bron is in the queue. Oh, Bron, sorry, I, I missed my queue page. Bron, go ahead. <clears> Hello. <throat> oh, um, I don't appear to be sending my video. Oh, well, can you hear me at least? Yeah, and we got your video with a very bright, oh, okay. you look it's... rather angelic with your light over your head. Uh -huh. It doesn't show it to me, how weird. Um, two things, one of which was to say that the, the plus Q in chat is the way to, to throw questions at people because I didn't think I heard you say that just for people who weren't here Thank before. You. Reminder. Um, we, I have not updated my draft um, because everyone said they weren't going to update their draft. I'm fully aware that the security considerations section in particular needs to be resolved, um, but also I would like to find a consensus between all three of us for a final draft because I think the IATF needs a consensus draft, not a special interest draft in this area. Um, so I'd love to work on consensus with everybody. I don't think my draft is anywhere near the right place yet, but I, I like some of the direction of it, um, particularly the positive. I'm trying to, to put a positive spin on it. Um, even if your dog is bad, calling them bad dog all the time does not create a good result. Well, yes, I do look quite angelic, don't I? All right, <laughs> that, that's all I had to say for now, but I'm quite keen to get questions from others. Very good. And Keith, you wanted to make a comment. Sure. There you uh, are. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of of the opinion that the um, the main product should be, or the starting point for the main product should be the GitHub page, and uh, that's really what I think we want to focus attention on. And that if we end up with a BCP or something like that, then what the subject of the BCP would be is more or less how that page gets maintained. Um, so it would be, you know, how do you appoint, maybe there's a committee that edits that page. How is that committee appointed? What rules do they operate by? maybe there's some frequency which with with which they're going to review that page and also to what extent is this page policy so i would i would like to say it should be advisory only uh it, it doesn't have a binding effect but that that would be addressed in the in the bcp so like a, how it should how the registry should be used or how the page should be used yeah something like that and I don't have it. I haven't tried to draft text or anything, but that's kind of what over the last week that I've been thinking would be a good result. Rather than taking any of the existing internet drafts and using that as the basis for something, we can we could 
glean material from those where appropriate. But um, I think part of what what's attractive to me about using the page is I think it really is where you want to focus the attention. And the other thing is, I think it it already involves contributions from multiple people, and, and there may be a kind of a, a closer to a consensus document than any of the internet drafts is. Anyway, that's just my idea. Okay. Um, if uh, and by the way, since not everybody has their video on all at the same time, which is a fine plan, by the way. Um, feel free to do your head nodding in either of the chat rooms. Uh, so that uh, Francesca and I can kind of see if there is head nodding. If all you want to do is a plus one, um, it, go ahead and do that. Uh, John, you are up next. Clemson. I, I, Keith, Keith got ahead of me a little bit, but I want to sort of agree with most of what he said and take it a bit further. Um, I think this discussion since the initial notes were posted has been very useful in raising awareness and uh, uh, and opening up the issues. But, uh, but I think the more we try to formalize and institutionalize this in the direction of ECPs, in the direction of formal ISG statements, in the direction of policies, uh, I think it's clear from both the discussions and the three documents that the more we go in that direction, the further we dig ourselves in or dig ourselves down. And, uh, and 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 principles about what you do when you find yourself at the bottom of a hole holding a shovel is uh, are probably relevant here. So I want to repeat my argument in a little different way that I made when this discussion started, uh, which is some guidance that these are sensitive important and important issues in reviewing drafts is useful. I don't think that needs to be terribly formalized. Uh, and uh, and encouraging people at every point of, of the review of a document, uh, starting from when it's first posted, to go to the authors and say, uh, uh, this language needs tuning uh, from this particular standpoint of my cultural environment, whoever I happen to be, uh, is, uh, is, is both necessary and sufficient. Uh, if a document gets to a working group last call or an IATF last call, and the authors have been told that and not gotten the message, uh, I think it's entirely appropriate to say that more loudly. Uh, but uh, by trying to make lists of strings which don't work, and uh, with the implication that if something doesn't work, we need to go through some procedure to add it to the list, uh, just seems to me to be a uh, uh, a distraction from the IATF's work and a uh, and an discouragement to people who want to get that work done. Uh, thanks. Thanks, and um, I, and feel free for any of you to jump back in. Uh, one question that Francesca and I still have is the where should work take place question. Uh, is there work to be done for simply an AD sponsored document to describe all this, or do we need a Quick working group, or what the uh, you know what the dispatch of this will be. Uh, Andrew, you were next in the queue. Hi, I think I'm off mute. Um, you are. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, well, firstly, responding to your request uh, uh, at the start, Pete. Um, just to reiterate what I've said on the list previously, I, th I think a bronze document is the right starting document, um, albeit with some things needed to be added. Um, in terms of how to move forward, um, firstly, picking up on Keith's point, um, personally, I, 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 th I think GitHub would be the wrong place to uh, do something for a variety of reasons, not least of which, if you want to be inclusive, maybe use something which is a lot more open than that would be my suggestion. Um, but then, um, uh, I guess many of us would have seen the publication in the last week or so of RFC 8890, um, which I, th which is about the internet is for users. I think there are some parallels with that potentially here, um, in that um, I, I think a document which sort of sets out that um, uh, uh, material published by the ITF should use inclusive language. Yeah. Um, 
is, is probably all that's needed. I, I agree with John. You don't need to have a long list of words you shouldn't use, um, but but actually something which is much more positive, as Bron said at the start, um, uh, is, is rather more appropriate. So I suggest model it after RFC eight eight nine zero. Uh, in that respect um, and I think that was published as an IAB document so maybe that would be the right route but others may, may think differently uh, to that. You're still muted. You're on mute. I've lost track of my queue window. Sorry about that. Uh, who is next in the queue? And thank you, Andrew. Uh, I think we we missed Bron from before. Yeah, pre and pretty sure it was me. Hey, look, I found I found my good camera. Uh -huh. uh, I no longer look quite so beautiful, but you know, <laughs> you can see me more clearly. Uh, I I actually tried to put myself in the queue directly after Keith to say yes, I agree that working on something like the GitHub GitHub resource, not necessarily GitHub seems like the right place. Um, that feels like something that we could all, all get behind. And the difficult part is how we manage it, um, how we manage updates, obviously. But uh, the other question which came up there as well was the internet is for the users, 8890. Does this necessitate some kind of update to our mission? Um, that That is, a bigger question and it's kind of an elephant in the room, but I think we should address it uh, or at least explicitly decide not to address it at this point. And, and John put himself back into the queue, I noticed. Uh, John, go ahead. I, I, I just wanted to very briefly follow up with one, uh, with on one aspect of your comment, Pete, while mostly agreeing with, with the last two speakers. Um, one of the options we have to have in our list of possibilities as a working group is none of the above. Uh, or to put that differently, uh, rather than feed, rather than only having the options of where we dispatch this to, there needs to be an option of saying we're done. Let's move on. Oh uh, yes, but but what constitutes done? So obviously, someone has to write down at some point if we're going forward with. GitHub or, or some other place for the list, someone has to write down where that is and what's going on, I think. Um, and are you saying, no, we can just do this as an informal, um, everybody agrees that this is where the list is and this is how we deal with it? Uh, I'm, 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 I'm saying that having spent one and a quarter meetings on this and more email messages than I care to count, it is not a foregone conclusion that the output of this dispatching process needs to be more meetings and more documents and more discussion on the working list. Okay. List. I think there has to be somewhere there an option which says it was a good idea to have this discussion. Thank you. We have all the procedures in place that we need and let's just move on. Okay. Uh, sim sim simply is one of the options, even if you don't agree with it. Right. No. And, and I mean, and so this is slight, a slightly different option than reject doing anything about this. It's simply, we know where we're going, let the ADs deal with however they want to set up, whatever they need to set up. In Jerry Salter's immemorable language, declare success and stop. Okay. Yeah. Oh, appreciated. Um, uh, Victor was next in the queue. Go ahead. Victor, would you care to unmute? Yes, I have to find my mouse so I can uh, <laughs> unmute myself. Uh, I have two screens and the mouse was in the wrong screen. Go ahead. Um, uh, sorry about that. I have a question for, for Bron and Keith, uh, and that is uh, if there is going to be a GitHub page, which I'm skeptical about, but you know, wait, uh, what kind of thing are you envisioning there? Uh, is it a list of suggested positive, you know, you know, this is a good idea to use for terminology for this case, or or what exactly are you seeing there, uh, as uh, as uh, as the as the useful you know content of such of such a resource? Gents, go right ahead and jump in. Uh, what I see is pretty much what's there now, but with the obnoxious word problematic removed from it. 
um, other than that, it seems like a perfectly good list of suggested alternatives. Um, I think problematic is a loaded word that we probably don't actually need. Keith? Um, yeah, I think when I'm referring to the GitHub page, I'm talking about the current the page that's currently hosted on GitHub, just in case that was ambigu ambiguous. I don't think it should stay on GitHub. I just think that the text in that page is a decent starting point. Um, and I, then I may have forgotten the question in the... Um, uh, so the question is, are we, are we trying to, to list forbidden terms specifically, or are we trying to list suggested good terminology, or are we trying to do both? Where are we going with this hypothetically? Well, I think that page mostly tries to give advice rather than just listing terms. And so, and I like the general advice more than I do the terms, but I don't think it hurts to have examples. Um, and the uh, and and also in terms of suggested alternatives, I mean, I would want it to be very clear. These are all advisory and suggestions, not any kind of sort of mandatory substitution or even forbidden words. Uh, it's more like someone said last week, use them with caution. That, that's close to what I have in mind. I think if you're using one of these words, maybe you should think about it. And uh, the, tr the trick will be to making that very clear because there will always be some people who want to insist you used a bad word. Um, and I don't think that's very helpful, but we can try to make the page as clear as possible about that. And, uh, and then just try to encourage the community to, to write documents with these considerations in mind. So, yeah. Um, and Keith, you put yourself in the queue. Did you have another um, comment? Uh, I think I might have been able to, let me think about that. Um, where was I going to put my head? No, I, I think I'm done for now at least. So. Okay. Um, next person in the queue, Bron removed himself back out of the queue. Uh, Rich, you're up. All right. Hi. Um, so um, I, the web, the GitHub page is good, but I'm concerned that this is the one time we publish things that aren't RFCs. Mm. Um, and I understand it might be a compromise to get something out there, but I, I don't, I, I again, I, I think we, you know, if we're doing something, it should be as an RFC because that's the way we work. Okay. Uh, Barry. Well, we, uh, we do have precedent for, um, publishing in a, in a different format. We have the DAO document that used to be an RFC and is now maintained as a web page. So uh, the point was that things that will change frequently, and I think this is something that will change frequently, uh, are better off with an RFC that points to them and then having the actual uh, data be elsewhere. Kind of think of it as an IANA registry, but not in IANA. Keith, you wanted to make a comment? Uh, sure. Um, I agree with Barry, and uh, I think that I also think this should not seem as formal as an RFC, even though some of our RFCs are not terribly formal. Uh, I don't want to make it seem like it's um, a standard. Honestly, I think it's advice, and we do have advice on other web pages. Um, so, also, I think frequency of update. What I have in mind is currently once a year. Uh, so, you shouldn't have to have these discussions constantly. That maybe once a year, people review suggestions and uh, and modify that web page accordingly. Could be every six months. It could start out at six months intervals and go to once a year. I don't know, but I I think sure, certainly less frequently than we want to update an RFC. Uh, Bron? Uh, interestingly enough, I agree almost entirely with Rich here, um, though I, I do take Keith's point about the update frequency. I don't think it will update that frequently after maybe the first couple. It might cycle quite fast to start off with, and then I think it will change quite slowly. It has to change quite slowly. The whole point is that we're choosing conservative terms that will last us a long time. 
They're supposed to go in documents that will last 20, 30 years. If we're trying to update this thing every month, we're doing it wrong. Um, I think there's an impression for whatever reason that making an RFC is particularly high cost. Um, I don't think it should be to do one per year on top of all the other RFCs that we do. I don't think that's any higher cost than setting up a brand new process. The question of whether it's going to be trusted as an RFC and hence considered a standard, I don't think it makes much difference. Um, I think people will refer to it regardless and try and use the weight of the IETF as a baton to whack other people over the head with you should do this. Um, I don't think the way we publish it will make any difference. If it's from a website that says IETF on it, it'll be treated the same. So I don't, I don't think it makes any difference. I'm in favour of publishing it through our standard publishing stream and standing by it, whatever we publish, uh, not putting it on a website that can be updated arbitrarily. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Victor? Hi, I'm faster with the mouse this time. Um, so two things. One is, I guess, the, the whole context in which we're working here is the context of language shifts and language changes uh, and uh, things, you know, but if we're okay yesterday might not be okay today and vice versa. So I'm skeptical of the, the stability of an RFC. Um, I also fear um, that an RFC um, lends the uh, negative connotations of deviating from the standard too much weight. Uh, these, as Keith and others have pointed out, should be aids to authors to, you know, stay out of trouble where they might accidentally not be aware of something. These are not taboos. Uh, there isn't, frankly, a major problem in AITF in this space. I'm surprised at how much time we're spending on this. Uh, the 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 evidence that we're you know rife with 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 language problems is, is rather thin. Sure, we can make some positive statements to encourage people, but I think an RFC uh, suggests that we indeed strongly believe that we have a deep and you know problem that requires serious attention, where what we have is potentially uh, just some lack of guidance in some cases, and guidance as such uh, need not be quite so heavyweight. Okay, Rich. Rich, who's looking for? Uh, so, yep, there we go. Sorry. Um, to the point mentioned before, you know, the DAO used to be a RFC and now isn't. It's also not a thing that talks about how we do our standards. Um, we have RFCs on security considerations, privacy considerations. HRPC is trying to do something on human considerations. The Internet is for the users is also one. Um, so again, I don't think the analogies that, oh, we have other documents um, holds. I am concerned. I understand. Oh, we're almost on the right path. Let's slow this down. Um, okay, I'm rambling, but I, I think it should be an RFC because that's how we publish things. Um, and we can't, we say in other forums, uh, we can't control how people use them. We're not the protocol police. Um, if someone, you know, we're following industry trends here, we're not leading them. No one's going to use our list of words, which is called. Uh, from what other people do as a way to beat people over the head. And uh, Ron. Yep. Um, just replying to Victor's point there, I think the answer to that is to make sure that the draft uses very positive language and and very encouraging and, and may rather than must and should about the substitutions. Uh, and at that point, it's no different than other documents. And back to, as I said before, I think it doesn't make a difference where we publish it. I have already seen uh, the draft that exists already being used in other places on the internet as say, hey, look, the, uh, the IETF already says this. Things with draft in their name are treated just as real as RFCs by the rest of the world. It's It says IETF in the URL, that is enough. I don't actually think it makes much difference to how people will see it. So I think this is a 
it's a legitimate concern, but I don't think it's a significant risk. Uh, and I don't think it's going to make any difference how we publish it, but I think using the RSC publication thing, amongst other things, means we all always know it. Um, it's not something that will be changed under us. I think using archive.org to see what the IETF said last week is nowhere near as good as the immutable record. I like immutable records. So I've seen a couple of people, and, and Andrew um, plus one to RFC along the lines of 8890. So am I hearing for those who think having some sort of RFC would be good that you think an RFC stating what this is about um, is what we want. And then the list would be the list of possible terminology would be somewhere independent or you're thinking we want to build this list and solidify it in the RFC. I wasn't clear on those who like the idea of an RFC, what they were looking for. Anyone want to pipe up? Oh, oh, uh, uh, John, go ahead. Uh, I see the queue is building now. Thank you. Uh, John, you were first up. Yeah, I'm again, and, and, and partly what I'm about to say depends on the answer to, your, to the question you just asked. Um, but I fear that if we move toward codifying a list of terminology in an RFC or anything like that, that we are going to be exposing the IETF's ignorance and insensitivity to the cultures and vocabulary we haven't picked up. And that's particularly important because I have now seen in this discussion, and curiously enough, a discussion in another context, which is closely paralleling it, uh, although not, not at quite as high a volume, uh, terms used that are themselves um, offensive and discriminatory and demeaning uh, used to discuss whether or not people should be using or not using a different set of offensive and de demeaning terms, but but based upon different cultural assumptions and uh, and with sensitivities based on uh, on one's selection, one's grandparents. And uh, and I just really think it would be unfortunate for the IHF to go down this path. And that's particularly important because every single term or set of words that show up on a in, in somebody's discussions or terminology or documents, if we codify and solidify this as official IETF policy, is going to turn out to be the source, either the source of yet another debate of the likes we've been having for the last couple of months, or dismissive behavior towards somebody's position that something or other is offensive. And I'm trying to figure out how to navigate this in a way which keeps the IETF focused on surprise, its technical work and its contributions to the internet community, rather than getting dragged down into this discussion, no matter how important the terminology is and the sensitivity that terminology is, which I completely agree that it's important. I just am trying very hard to figure out a way to navigate this that doesn't drag us down. So can I read that answer? In, if you were to answer my question directly, it would be, if there's gonna be an RFC, it sure, certainly shouldn't have a list of terms in it. If there's going to be an RFC, we should talk, it should talk about broad principles and the importance of sensitivity on these issues. And if necessary, ways of raising observations about particular documents which overlap with these issues, but absolutely should not contain a vocabulary. Okay, that, that, that's okay. what I was much, looking for. Much, okay. much, much less a mapping vocabulary, which goes beyond, this is bad, use that. Right, right. Okay, Andrew, you had a comment on it. Uh, yeah, which is just to say that without harping on too much about RFC 8890, but uh, forgive me, um, that is published as informational. And I think that's what's needed here um, is something which is informational. Um, and other than that, I pretty much agree with what John just said. Um, um, to to focus on principles would be particularly helpful. Um, because I guess the risk of publishing a list of forbidden words, for example, or is twofold. A, it will be out of date. Uh, B, um, you know, depending on your cultural references, 
it will either look entirely reasonable or completely ridiculous. Um, and neither of those is, is especially helpful. So I, I think principles is better. Um, and an inf informational RFC would seem like the right place to, to approach this from. Yeah, and, and uh, Miria reminds us in the Jabber chat that one of the, one of the reasons that uh, 8890 is informational is because it came out of the IAB and therefore couldn't be a BCP even if it wanted to be. Uh, Maybe that's a useful route to follow, though, to put it out as an IAB um, document. Can you dispatch to the IAB? Uh, in, in theory, we could, but they could choose to tell us no. <laughs> So um, I just wanted to, uh, yeah, sorry for interrupting, but yeah, I'm interested to hear um, from John and whoever spoke before, uh, if you have ideas on where this, the content of this um, RFC would be discussed, which is where should we dispatch this discussion? Yep, that's our eventual, uh, what, what needs to come out of this working group. Um, Bron, you were after Andrew. Oh, I am back again. Um, yeah, so I think John raised the one big problem with enumerating a list, which is that you can't enumerate a complete list and that putting anything in the list prioritizes those particular words above any other word. Um, that is a hard problem and certainly the easiest way to solve it is not to have a list at all. The problem with not having a list at all is then you have very little. Um, so the question is whether the principles along with the GitHub link are sufficient and will, will make people happy. I would certainly be satisfied with that um, because I, I likewise agree that we don't have a giant problem and I think we could create a giant problem for ourselves by trying to solve a small problem. Um, but I know other people have different opinions about the both the level of the problem and the value of any particular um, signal, really. It, it comes down to whether we're signaling to the world that we care about them. Um, and a way to do that that doesn't signal to other large sections of the world that we don't care about them is the tricky problem here. Fair enough. Uh, Keith? Yeah, I was just thinking a minute ago that really the the immediate near term thing that we need to decide is how does this document get maintained how does this what i'm calling the github document now even though it would probably be hosted somewhere else you know and that's that's the thing i think what we a lot of us want is for this stuff not to be critical path for other itf work or for gen dispatch right we want to move this somewhere where it will be taken care of and given the appropriate amount of attention, which is to say not too much, but enough, um, so that people who have concerns about particular language that IETF is or might be using can send their comments there and that some team of people will look at this and, and periodically uh, say make, make recommendations that are non-binding uh, but there would be a place to do that. If IEB wants to do that, that might be a good place. Or if um, if we wanted to create a separate group for doing that, that might also work. But at some point, we kind of need a proposal for how to do it. And so the next task might really be edit a proposal for how this gets maintained. And one thing that Gen Des Dispatch might decide to do is say, will entertain proposals on the mailing list for how to maintain this kind of thing. And then that will get dispatched later. So I'm really kind of saying, how do we, how do we move this away so that it's not critical path? That's really kind of how I'm thinking about it. And I'm trying to get my head around that, uh, mostly because the, the only good uh, uh, agenda item for Gen Dispatch is one that is gone. <laughs> um, so well, I, but the thing is, right now we don't even have a proposal for that. So I don't know what to right. do in the absence of a proposal. Do you do you form a design team? But I don't see that as one of Jin Dispatch's oh, well, Jin Dispatch's options. Plausible. I mean, a plausible answer to your question is um, Jen Dispatch could say to uh, Alyssa, "Look, form yourself a mailing list and have a quick boff at." one or another IETF meetings 
and, you know, assign appropriate people to get an RFC on the principles written and a way that you're going to manage this on that list over there that goes with the BOF that you set up and be done with it. Well, I would say please don't do that because I really think this needs to come from the bottom up and not from the top down. Right. Well, someone's got to set up the where it's going to take place, um, you know, uh, independent of whether there's, uh, you know, what what uh, happens in that place. Uh, and, and ADs are meant to go off and create mailing lists and or put a boff on on an agenda and let people discuss. Well, would would Gin Dispatch want to make recommendations about that or is that going too far? That's that's exactly in our purview of of what exactly we want the area director in this particular case to do. Um, we can say we think you should do these things. Um, that's what dispatch is about. So okay, all right, yeah. Uh, John, you cued yourself. John, John. Yeah, there you go. I was I, I I I I was going to try to just put this in jabber, and then the last comment or so um, inspired me, and just <laughs> probably not the right term. Um, it, the first answer is where the dispatch, as I've suggested earlier. I think our best alternative is dispatch this to nowhere, no right. it's in GitHub, the IETF web pages, Bitbucket, or elsewhere. Uh, no committee needed to prepare that non-existent list, no task, there's no discussion about where to discuss it. If that doesn't work for us, and there has to be mailing list discussion, the other side of the inclusiveness that motivated this whole argument suggests that needs to be the IETF list. And if the IETF list isn't inclusive enough, and John Levine's recent posting suggests that it is not, then we have a much more serious problem than what to do about this terminology. So you would rather just have it be, if there has to be further discussion, you would rather just have it be a further IETF list discussion to get this focused and, and end of story. If, if there has to be further discussion, I would rather have the discussion on a document by document basis in context until the cultural adjust, the culture adjusts itself as necessary to better use of terminology and avoidance of offensive terminology. And has been pointed out earlier, I do not believe we had, I, like, like the earlier comment, I think, Bronze, I, we don't have a major problem here. There's no evidence that we really have a major problem here. And if this is a relatively infrequent problem, which crops up occasionally, then I think we ought to be doing this on a informal correction basis and, uh, and on a, uh, uh, on a uh, private comments to author basis, unless there's rejection of the author, very much to the point of how we handle things which some individual doesn't think are offensive and bullying but other people might, especially those being offended or bullied. Okay, Andrew. Uh, yeah, I, 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 as I put on uh, Jabber, I think the problem with posting it nowhere, so dispatching it nowhere rather, um, even though I agree with John and Bron and others, I don't think this is a huge problem. I think the issue with doing nothing about it is that in itself sends a message which would be unhelpful. So, given the sheer John, volume, you're still unmuted. So, given the sheer volume of discussion on the IETF mailing list um, from a few weeks back, um, just dropping it, I think, would be the wrong uh, approach. Uh, and for the same reason, uh, uh, I think putting it back to the IETF mailing list would also be distinctly unhelpful given that the discussion on the IETF mailing list degenerated into an unproductive discussion previously. So I just question why we think putting it back there would be a useful uh, next step, I, I, which is why I think an informational RFC. So doing something to try and kill the problem is better than doing nothing. 
to, to kill the problem uh, in, in this instance. I think some activity is is required this time around. All right, Rich, you were next. Uh, yeah, I agree with Andrew that if we take it back to the ITF list, not only will it be a, a big unproductive discussion, um, but we also saw that attempts to quell and make the discussion more productive ended up calling into question some of the motives of the leadership and, and really stormed out of control. Um, the second thing is I want to respond to what one of the things uh, John said. Um, asking that those who are offended or harmed be take on the responsibility, um, that's not a good thing and it tends to not work well or tends to work really badly when you have marginalized communities or victims. I don't think we're anywhere near that stage, of course, but it's not a good way. You know, well, if you're offended, speak up. That's like saying, well, if you're being abused, speak up. It tends to be, you know, experience has shown us that it's hard. And again, I'm not saying there's direct parallel or that we're anywhere near close to that by probably orders of magnitude. Um, that's all. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks. Bron? Uh, got lots of notes here this time. Um, yeah, I think it would not be productive on the IATF list. I think the work needs to be done by people who are willing to show up and do the work, not just drive by and comment on it. Um, so another list that advertised widely and clearly, I think, has a lot of value. Um, saying that those who are offended by something, we don't want to have to force them to take on the work. Sure. Um, the flip side is that we have to be sure that they otherwise would take on the work in the ITF and add value. Otherwise, um, we have basically we're we're chasing at shadows, as I think Keith just commented on there. Having people who are pro proxying for those who are supposedly offended uh, coming in and using that as a way to force their views because they can they can say the lurkers in email are complaining to me and supporting me and and feel marginalised. I think that is that is a failure mode that we can't really allow to happen. The most important thing here, and I'm seeing the, the comment of, we want it to be as minimal as possible. We do want to send a welcome signal to people. Um, we have, I mean, you look at the, the makeup of the ITF, and you could say it's systemically racist, you could say it's systemically Western, you could say it's systemically English, you could say it's systemically American to a large degree. Um, it's largely people from the USA there are lots of ways in which we don't represent the entire world. I think representing the entire world is not our primary goal. Our primary goal is to produce high quality documents that improve the internet. Um, and to the extent that that is done by the people who show up, we, we want people who will do that to show up and we want them to feel welcome when they arrive. And mm -hmm. so our goal needs to be something that welcomes those who have an interest in that and are willing to do the work. And so having a group that is there for those who want to get there is hopefully not filled by hobbyists who care about this, but don't care about the ITF's work. Um, that is a danger mode that I think is, is tricky. Uh, how much do we want people who, who want to play around in the sandpit of which words are good and bad, but don't have any, any value to add uh, to the internet? Uh, John, you put yourself back in earlier, but you did say something in the Jack have something additional. Yeah, um, I, I, well, I put myself in the queue before and I want to pick up on something that Bron said. I'm, I'm very concerned about any ongoing discussions we have about this turning into an activity for hobbyists to use his term who then dictate to the people trying to do technical work how they should do that technical work. Um, that has intermittently been a, intermittently but long-term been a problem in the IETF. I'm concerned about encouraging it. And I'm concerned, as I think I said in the chat, about getting into a situation where people have to choose between being part of this conversation and doing technical work. Uh, or any other kind of work which improves the internet rather than the idea style. The reason I'm advocating and the reason I'm advocating doing this on a document by document basis 
is that I think our most frequent problem is going to come up in practice when we are doing a revision or update or clarification or BCP about an existing document which uses old terminology. And at that point, the new document is going to have to have a discussion about whether new terminology, which confuses people because it's different, is better than retaining the old terminology, which is offensive. And I don't see how to have that conversation except on a per document basis. If we have a completely de novo document, which has no previous precedent in, in, in no previous track history, and we don't have that very often in my ex recent experience, then it is appropriate to question terminology in those documents. And if the people who are most offended have the have whatever it takes, good, bad, or indifferent, or obnoxiousness to raise those issues, fine. If somebody else has to raise them on their behalf, fine. If they can be raised privately with authors, that's less problematic than having to raise a public stink. But I don't see how to do this on a basis of a word list without having that document by document discussion. And if we're going to have the document dis by document discussion, let's have the document by document discussion rather than trying to create word lists and more importantly, special discussion groups and committees who are going to become, going to become the language police for everybody else. Yeah. Um, Victor, you're up. I uh, just wanted to mention, and perhaps you're aware, uh, that uh, uh, the uh, the idea that people who find material, you know, in the ongoing ITF workflow objectionable will stay silent, uh, I think, you know, lacks some credibility. Uh, you may have seen a note from me that I found something objectionable. I sent to you, you know, didn't want to make a big stink about it on the list, but, you know, I found something objectionable and I wrote about it. Uh, and if somebody's so shy, they can probably find somebody to speak for them. But the idea that we will stay entirely unaware of objectionable material, especially in the current climate, seems not terribly credible. I think the feedback will come forward one way or another. Um, well, uh, let, let me let me point out that others have said that if the feedback comes from other than those who were offended, that that is somehow not credible, which is sort of a cycling. Uh, 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 if uh, it, there's there's a different kind of other, right? Sometimes it is a you know some you know I, I, a person who was too you know uncomfortable, you know, but a specific one and spoke directly to me, and it's firsthand. Whereas what we're seeing sometimes is that there's a hypothetical class of people on, on whose behalf you're speaking, and then the credibility does go down, yes. Uh, when we're speaking for a generic, you know, hypothetical, imagined offended person, even if, even if, it, even if the imagination is on, on the money, uh, credibility disappears once it's kind of vacuous. But uh, indeed, uh, some people might be so shy that they want to not engage uh, in, you know, for fear of whatever directly, that, that's fine. If they find a proxy that's direct, uh, no problem. The credibility is fine if, if there's a proxy. Uh, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, just this discussion reminded me that um, if you cast your minds back to the lengthy dialogue on the IETF list, um, I do remember reading one memorable post by someone that said, I think they were an academic, I can't remember who it was, otherwise I'd say, uh, but that they'd received um, a document from some people from an excluded group that used terminology that they thought should have offended those people, um, but clearly didn't because they used the terminology and they felt they'd done a good job by explaining to them why they should have been offended. Uh, and I struggle with that because clearly they weren't offended. So you, you're then trying to transfer your feelings about terminology to other people. Um, uh, so I, th I think that sort of thing is quite problematic as opposed to um, I think the last comment, which was if you've had a first hand feedback from someone who, for whatever reason, feels unable to represent themselves, but is personally offended, that's different. But, but representing that specific you know, gr groups of people clearly are, are offended, but without any first hand experience, I think it, it is just a nonsense. And that's just a way of trying to just 
own opinion on something rather than explaining it coherently for yourself. Rich, you wanted to jump in? Yeah, I just wanted to bring up something that was mentioned in the unofficial chat here. Um, we're trying, you know, overall, we're trying to be more inclusive and to say, oh, well, if someone's offended, let them, you know, and we, and they make that known, then we will make every effort, we'll bend over backwards, what have you, to accommodate them. But the concern, and I raised this at the previous meeting, um, the concern is not that, is that the people aren't even here at the table. Um, if you look around the room here, <laughs> Most of us are not of, you know, are to be frank, you know, privileged middle aged white guys in from, you know, whatever country. Um, and so by not coming forward and not saying, yes, we are going to try to be inclusive, and here is some of the ways we are doing that. Um, and I have come around to, you know, going with to say, okay, we don't have to have a prescriptive list per se. But we should say, you know, it, it's kind of funny that we seem to be emerging consensus around the IESG free sentence statement that started this whole thing. Um, but the people who might be hurt or might be driven off or might say, oh, this just reinforces, um, what was a recent article? White hair, old men in a room talking loudly. Um, they're never going to be here. So I disagree with the fact that we'll get feedback. What will, based on my personal experiences on the IETF list and open source projects, we'll get feedback, but it won't be that kind. It will be from people who say, no, everything is fine. And that's putting it mildly. Robert, you wanted to jump in here. Hi. Um, so just a quick question actually back to John I guess on having a word list so I've on some of the discussion there's been comments about a word list is bad but I as a reviewer think that it's quite helpful to have a list of words of of things that aren't banned but potentially words you might want to be aware of and sensitive to so not as a way of trying to restrict the words people are using but for example the term grandfathered that appears on that list I was never aware that it had any cultural sensitivity at all Whereas now, having seen that, I would potentially think in a document, well, maybe I, I won't use that term, I could use a different term instead. So I feel that having a list of words just to warn warn people or advise people that maybe you might want to not use these terms and maybe a short description as to why, I feel that that's potentially um, a beneficial thing. I do see there's a concern that that could turn into uh, people trying to beat you with a stick saying you must not use these terms. So I think you'd need some sensitivity as to, as to how it is described. But generally, the industry seems to be moving in this direction where we try and have more sensitivity to the language. And I think that the ITF should be um, sensitive to that industry trend and, um, and somewhat say, yes, we're aware of that and we want to um, be good citizens. Thanks, uh, Brom. I was uh, mostly replying to Rich about the the middle aged white men shouting loudly in rooms. Um, interestingly, the couple of people who pushed back most strongly against the language stuff on the list were people who were not from your, your Western European or or US Western college li liberal elite educated people um so we had a japanese person who was was quite strongly against this and was quite definitely shouted down as no you're being culturally insensitive here uh, like this is this is the one major culture that was represented in that discussion other than western university educated snobs um, <laughs> if we wanted to put it that way and so who are we excluding here are we looking for people who look just like us but have darker skin um, because that seems to be a lot of what I'm seeing in this, is we're looking for people who are just like us and think just like us, but look a little different. Um, and I don't think that's the primary inclusive goal that would actually give us different thoughts and different ideas. Victor? Uh, uh, just briefly, I, I did want to maybe give John a chance to answer Bron first. So if you wanted to put me behind him, I'll wait. 
uh, or, or was it Bronner? Somebody asked John the question directly, and I thought maybe it'd be better remembered if it were answered now. Did you want to make a comment, John? Or uh, I, I, I sort of did in the chat. Um, oh, that's fine. Um, I, I, I think we, we, we need to open up the private channels for this and they need to work. Uh, and that, and that's one specific constructive suggestion. Uh, having started talking again, um, um, two observations, one about Cullen's comment, which is that I recognize that and appreciate it. But again, uh, following up on Bron's comment, uh, we better make certain that if we're doing that, we are not deciding that this problem is all about people whose skin is slightly darker or whose educational background is slightly different uh, than, the, the, than the collection of people on this call. And, uh, and the comment that when somebody, that when somebody came in from a different cultural environment, he was immediately shouted down is precisely one of the reasons I'm worried about trying to do this by the list or by committee. Um, and I don't know how to balance those things. And following up Bron's comment with one that will probably not be clear to most of the people on this list, and that's deliberate, in addition to people with darker skins, one could be also be talking about people with bigger noses. And if you and if you don't understand the reference, that makes my point. And uh, I believe you meant Robert, not Colin, but that's okay. Just yes, sorry, to, just in case uh, uh, Francesca missed it for the notes. Yeah, sorry, I, I get confused easily at my age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Victor, uh, yes, um, I do want to respond to the the question of you know people not in the room. Uh, and I agree that there are lots of people not participating in the ITF who are not representative of the world. Uh, but I very much want to counter the view that the reason they're not here is because of potential terminology or other issues, as opposed to the fact that participation in the ITF is a luxury activity. It is costly in time, and often costly in terms of employer support. You need to work at a company that's rich enough to fund you there if you're going to be attending regularly, or if you're a bit of a hobbyist like me, uh, then you need to have you know, sufficient independent income to be able to take the time and energy to do this rather than uh, bread on the table. A, a question for you, Victor. I, I mean, speaking of firsthand experience, I've certainly had firsthand conversations with women who don't participate simply because of the environment, not because they do not have the funding, not because they uh, somehow right. are technically less able, but they right. simply don't because they feel that the environment is not sufficiently inclusive that they can right. heard. But, but there, I think the structural problem that makes it so is again, not terminology, but the fact that this is a competitive rough and tumble place. And that the employers who send people to, you know, Cog, push their their view of the standards and technologies through. Uh, expect them to play politics. No, I, again, I am. I'm hearing from women specifically that women will not participate, not because it's rough and tumble, but because women are directly targeted for being women. Uh, okay, and 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 that, and that may be the case, but again, the language in these drafts. Well, it, right? uh, language language is clearly part of it. No, but 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 the language in these drafts, right? Yeah, is isn't, isn't that language, of, right? It no, isn't that there, language. there is language that is clearly part of language being used in documents. That's clearly part of that. Oh, experience. right. But but you know, but but sexism and you know, picking up, you know, pick up attempts and harassing and so on, uh, you know, which which happens in any industry, happens in this one, happens, you know, when 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 it's all just men and there are a few women, you know. That's that's life, uh, isn't about you know uh, master slave blacklist whitelist uh, none of that. Sounds, it it sounds like you're speaking without experience of talking to these people. That's what uh, it sounds like to me. Okay, 
I, uh, I, 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 and I, this is, I'm, I, I, I'm going I, through this sure. exercise, yeah, yeah, I'm going I, through I, this, I, Victor, I'm going through this exercise simply because I want to make sure that we are not committing the same offense okay. that was talked about before, which is saying things without experience of talking to people who may have been affected by this. Right. Uh, ag agreed, there are those other issues, but again, the list of suggested terminologies, right, in this particular dispatch, mm -hmm. none of that addresses harassment of women, right? No, but it, it uh, certainly affects what might be exclusionary to other people. And, and, and I just want to make sure that people... Okay, it's not a bit of a stretch. Victor, the, please let me finish. All right. I want to make sure that people don't go down the path of saying that, these, that certain things do not exist because they've had no okay. experience of them. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay. Yep. Because we, I think we agree that that's part of the problem right. here is people saying things without firsthand experience of what's gone on. Right. And, you know, on, on, the, on the making it a more hospitable place for women, I'd be all over supporting that, to be honest, as opposed to technical terms, you know. Uh, really, you know, I think that's a big difference. It is a credible and real issue and, and probably one we can document as being a significant issue for the IITF, where previously I said these issues are not a significant problem in my view. Uh, the women issue has 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 a real, you know, feel to it that 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 resonates. All right, uh, Rich, you were in the queue. Yeah, I just to clarify because I think Victor was responding to the comment I made. I wasn't saying that when I said the people who might be offended aren't in the room. I wasn't saying that's not why they're there here with us. Um, I, I wasn't commenting at all on reasons why someone may or may not participate. I was just saying that looking at our membership, we it seems pretty obvious that the people we think are partially driven away, one of the possible reasons, I think there's enough weasel words there, are the language and confrontation style. And, or let, to focus, keep it focused, the language. And also, to repeat what I said previous meeting, the industry is moving this way. And if you look at that GitHub page, every single term that's call, called out there is endorsed as being, I'll say, problematic by multiple organizations. And we have to assume that some of them know what they're doing. That's all. Thanks. Andrew. Sorry, just coming off uh, mute. Um, yeah, just picking up on, on that last uh, conversation. Um, uh, you'll see I posted in, in the Jabber. I mean, maybe the, the, the ROC could usefully look beyond just terminology to uh, um, in, inclusiveness more broadly, um, because uh, you know, the ITF is not a particularly diverse organization, but in fairness, neither is the tech sector. Um, so I suspect, and I've not got stats on this, but I suspect it's no, no worse than the sector um, itself. Um, but having said that, it, it, it does lack diversity of thought um, as, as an organisation overall. Um, uh, I don't think that's a problem to do with terminology, to be perfectly honest. I think that's a problem more to do with culture. Um, and, and maybe that's where a slightly wider sort of focused uh, or more, more broadly framed uh, informational RFC on, on inclusiveness would be useful just to sort of give some broad principles as to, 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 to be clear that the ITF does uh, or would welcome um, more, more diverse um, participation by, by different groups. Um, and then just, just very briefly, on, on the list of forbidden words to be avoided whatever um I, I just remember i think i said this on the last call there were some posts from people in eastern europe who'd had prior experience of forbidden words and the use of those having consequences and they were very concerned uh, about that direction of travel 
Um, so I think, I think that just needs to be approached with care, maybe learning from people that have had first-hand experience uh, of that previously. Um, and, and focusing more on positiveness. So going back to where we started, where so Bron and others suggested not focusing on the negatives, focusing on the positives would, would be a more productive way forward. Um, that was it. Thanks. Uh, Bron, you were next up. Well, who? Um, I, I also want to bring it back maybe to a discussion of where we're we going to go, go from here, because I does feel like we're going around in circles. Um, one question that comes out of all of this is what are our success criteria for this work? How do we know it's succeeded? How do we tell that we're going in the right direction? Um, I, I think we have the previous meeting. Um, we don't have either of the authors of one of the drafts here, which is difficult because one of their main objections to my draft was that it didn't cite references um, and it wasn't pointing to scholarly research in the area. Um, I have notes to address that. The turtles all the way down problem, which I think is is part of the problem also with the list that's in GitHub. Yes, all these organizations are, are saying these words are problematic and to a certain extent they're all cross-referencing each other and cross-referencing the same research um, and to some extent also having the same groups pushing into each of these organizations that these words are problematic and then mirroring it back out. And that was certainly one of the concerns that was raised in the mailing list was the potential for the IETF to be used to amplify that same message um, that that is being pushed in. Um, obviously, also the issue with, with any scholarly work is that you need to tell what the quality of it is, uh, whether it's reproducible, whether it suffers from publication bias, where even if you can reproduce some things, or even if the methodology was sound, whether uh, there were 10 different surveys done and one of them found this issue and that's the one that's published, which is a particular issue in medical areas. Um, I don't think we want to try to base ourselves on references because I think that that opens up a giant can of worms where you're then relying on the quality of those references. Uh, I would prefer us to do it from sound principles um, and from the principle of our goals are still to produce high quality technical documents for the internet. Um, if we became a super inclusive organization that had millions of different views and an equal representation of all colors, flavors and, and preservatives of people, um, I don't think that would be valuable if we no longer produce high quality technical documents. So we need to have our eye on the goal of producing high quality technical documents and the reason for including additional people and for more diversity of thought and diversity of people in the organization is to do better at our goals, um, not the primary goal being incre incre increasing diversity along any particular axis. So I, I appreciate that. And I think uh, my colloquy with uh, Victor probably moved us further away from the goal of this discussion and I apologize for that, which is, you know, what are we going to do, uh, whether we count this as a wildly important immediate solve issue or a minor thing that would be good to do anyway that will increase our ability to write good, solid technical documents? Um, uh, what, what is the outcome that we want? And, and I think... Uh, Ron, you've done a good job of pointing us in that direction. Yeah, if, if I could spell out, I think where, where I'm at in terms of the outcome, I think we should go for here. I think publishing a document, basically a welcoming document, um, informational RFC saying, we want to use inclusive language, we want to use good terms. And the reason we want to do it is that we want a variety of inputs. We want to bring people from all over the world with all different backgrounds who are interested in producing high quality technical documents to further the internet. We want our environment to be welcoming, all these good things. And a place where discussion of specific terms that are causing specific issues or specific things can happen. There is not the all IATF list, um, but is some long running place because I don't think this is a problem we're going to solve now. I think we need a place for discussion to happen. I think it needs rules. Um, I think it needs to be built in a way that 
doesn't devolve into special interests fighting at each other. I don't know how to do that. Um, if I had an answer to that, you know, I'd be rich. But I think that's not not your rich, uh, actual with money. Um, yeah, I think we need a document, and I would like love it to be a consensus document. I'd love it to be based on principles, not on references, as I said earlier. Um, but I think we should be able to build that kind of thing and publish it as a welcoming thing. I'm, I'm less inclined to put the list of words in it than I was earlier in this meeting uh, because of the incompleteness problem. As soon as you bless a particular list of words, you no longer, anything that's not on that list is considered to be of less value. And I think that's exclusionary in and of itself. But I think having a place where we accumulate the things we know about is a good a good idea because we do need some kind of place where this is discussed. If you do nothing, then if you, if you if you go so wishy washy that you don't record anything, then then that that is a statement of doing nothing at all. Um, I think I'm rambling now. No worries. Uh, um, yes, go ahead, Pete. Yeah, and uh, uh, the reminder that if you do have access to Jabber, it is easier for us to track the chat over in Jabber than it is in the WebEx chat, but it's fine. We'll copy and paste before we close the meeting down, but it, do bring it over to uh, Jabber if you can. Uh, was there something else, uh, uh, Francesca? Well, I just want to ask if, if there is anybody that has uh, objection to to Brun's proposal to try to build on, um, um, yeah, right, like a, a principles document. Um, uh, I, and I see Robert in the queue, but I, I like putting that question out, uh, and then we'll get to Robert in a moment. Uh, are there strong objections to doing a sort of principles RFC, whether it whatever status it might have, but a principles RFC and uh, a, you know, possible look aside list of uh, suggested useful terminology. That's interesting. No, it's fa it's failure to find the unmute button and not knowing how you wanted your responses. Oh, it, it feel feel free to um, unmute yourself and and uh, 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 jump in if you have uh, objections to such a, a plan. I, I I think such a document would be a good idea, probably, but my probably is based on not understanding whether that document is expected to reflect IETF consensus. The clear opinion of, a, of an individual or two, which means in the current rules, it cannot be published in the IETF stream uh, or something else. I, I think if we recommend something, if we dispatch, whoops, sorry, go ahead. If, if we recommend that dispatch something that has to turn into an IETF consensus document, then I see it as, a, as potentially taking us down another rat hole of discussions that distract from doing the IETF type work. Important though it may be. Uh, so I'll, I'll take that as um, possible, but uh, uh, you, you find it not likely that we're going to get out of the rat trap if we try and do that. I, you should take that as favoring the idea in principle, but having grave concerns about how we get from here to there, which is okay. the same thing you just said. All right. Um, Pete, are you, so you go ahead. Yeah, you may be surprised that uh, I will. I would, in fact, support the principles document, especially if it leaves the specific list of terminology entirely out, uh, because then then all the arguments about which words are good and which words are bad and which ones are loaded in which culture evaporate entirely, and we're talking about uh, communicating clearly and sensitively and listening to people and all kinds of good things behind which I think we can all stand with no real controversy. Uh, you know, I'm not here to be, to be a dogmatic bigot. Uh, I'm here to be able to express myself clearly uh, and, you know, not feel like, you know, there's, there's a language police standing behind my back. Interesting. Um, and, and let me follow up and others can jump in with this as well. And I haven't forgotten about you, Robert. 
um, but uh, if Victor or, and one of the others, do you um, object to having a, a list of words with discussion about why they might or may not be useful or possible alternatives to those words? Or um, is the list, you know, right out? You don't want to have any such list. Um, so uh, I don't see any possibility of consensus on such a list. Right. Although, so... uh, although if the list sticks entirely to positive, you know, here are good terms for these cases and right. stays well away from here are culturally loaded reasons why the previous ones are bad. Uh, we may be able to converge on some of the some subset of the things about the, these are good terms. Okay, so, that's interesting. Um, uh, uh, so let me get back to Robert, and then I'll. I saw uh, Keith put himself in the queue later on. So Robert, did you want to make a comment? Uh, yes, I mean, actually, in terms of um, Ron's suggestion, I'm. I'm very supportive of what he's suggesting there uh, on many fronts. I think that having a positive document is definitely the way forward. I feel that um, definitely not putting a curated list of words in a document is a good idea. I, th I think that that would be a mistake. It would it'd have lots of arguments. And, um, and also what's clear is this terminology and what words are, are good and bad changes over time. So we need a mechanism that if you have such a list of words that it can evolve over time uh, in a reasonable way. So. Um, so again, I think that having a document that says this is what we're aiming for and this is what we're encouraging, I think that's a good thing. I do actually still believe that having a list of words is useful outside of that, like the GitHub with the references. I actually like that. I think it's good. I, I personally would say I would regard not saying that words are problematic. I would say the words are potentially problematic. So I don't want to say you should not use these terms, but more that more a uh, um, maybe you should think about using these other terms. They might be better choices. They might be less loaded, less culturally sensitive. So not a, uh, telling people off these are bad, but these are potentially better choices. So again, trying to frame that in a positive light, I think is a good thing. Um, and the, one of the other points that Bron made about um, do we need to include references um, as to why we're doing this? Uh, again, I agree with Bron here that that's not necessary in my mind. I don't think we need to say, Oh, these are cases where people have got this wrong and hence we need to fix this. I think again, having the document purely focused on what we're trying to achieve and why we're trying to achieve it is sufficient. I don't think there's any need to pull out particular cases or particular expressions. I think that there's enough understanding in the industry about what those things are anyway that writing them down is not helpful. Uh, Keith, you put yourself in the queue. Uh, yeah, so trying to sum up, uh... I like Ron's proposal. I especially like the idea of making it welcoming. Uh, I like, I believe that any sort of specific discussion of, of words or, or terminology belongs in a separate place. I do think we probably need that. I'm guessing that there's going to be, uh, we, don't, we don't have any of the real strong objectors on this call, but I suspect we'll get some pretty strong pushback if there's not a place to put examples of terminology and I, I might like like it if i were wrong but that's my guess um and as for the outcome of this meeting i'm wondering if the right answer is create a mailing list so that the discussion goes somewhere it's not in gen dispatch it's not on the ietf list but again we don't have a proposal at the moment to say, let's make this an RFC. And I don't exactly want that to come down from on high. I'd rather that come from the bottom up. So well, that, that's kind of my concrete suggestion for the outcome of this meeting. So, and, and to frame that, um, you know, one question that I was asked sort of, uh, you know, separately, and, and I think it's a reasonable one is if, if we do propose that there's gonna be a document and let's say it's going to be AD sponsored. Well, who who gets to choose who's the editor and and what that document's going to look like? And um, would it not be easier if we just did one of uh, the app, you know, at, uh, art area style quick spin up working group, um, so that they can choose a document editor, write the document, and then hand it off and be done. Well. And, 
and, and, and so you say, let's have a little mailing list and and be bottom up about it. But I I want to know what form that takes so that when we make our dispatch recommendation, I have an idea about what I'm suggesting is going to happen. I, I think about creating a working group is that there is a presumption that the group is going to publish output and um, ah. that oh. might that might be. Uh, a little bit unconstructive. And I, so I, I think that maybe often when a working group is created, there's sort of some direction given to the working group that says, you're going to use this document as a starting point. And so how do you get to that starting point? How do you get that document? And do you, does the IESG or the chair pick a document and say, that shall be the starting point? Or do you sort of entertain uh suggestions i mean there's problems with both approaches i don't know i feel like we need some concrete output of this meeting so that we don't loop forever that's where i'm coming from um rich you wanted to jump back in uh, yeah i mean i can certainly support uh, a document i think uh, as we've been talking about i think having good examples you know just the column B as opposed to the column A is important to get people thinking along the right terms and it doesn't do anything disparaging. We say, well, if you have a collection of servers and one of them is in charge of the other or whatever the words are, use these terms. Um, I think we need to have examples and I think it's not by saying, oh, we're not gonna use the word master slave, but we're gonna say, well, in this kind of situation use this terminology in this kind of situation use those terminology this is not an exhaustive list i'm less much less worried i guess i can use the 25 cent word sanguine i'm much more sanguine about if something new comes along how we update the rfc we have a whole errata system we can decide to publish a document that says here's some more examples or we can issue a whole new rfc you know once we get enough word changes i think uh, worrying that the list will evolve over time um, We've handled that all the time. So this is not something special. Thank you. All right. I don't see anyone else in the queue. Um, interesting. So Victor uh, mentioned in the WebEx chat, is a bronze document looking like a plausible consensus starting point? So what we noticed during last interim was that bronze document was indeed the one with the most support um, interesting but, so yeah. let, let's let's put that question to this group of people i mean this is obviously we're going to bring it back to the list and get a little input um and you know i don't know if bron wants to sign up to be the continuing editor of this but is one plot uh, are people in this room inclined to take bronze document as sort of the um the input document to something ad sponsored as a principles document and carve it down into something that has consensus uh, and and i will take uh, john's giggling as it, as if we think that can happen <laughs> and um it, do are there folks who who don't think that's a good idea or or you know think that we should start somewhere else uh you said ad sponsored that means not a working group I, i'm that means not a work yeah. right i mean it, the the sound i heard from the last few comments was uh, especially keith but other kind of working group maybe so that we would maybe set up a mailing list to how to get bronze document into this principles document we're talking about. And then it would be AD sponsored because that's, you know, okay. if we want it to be All an right. IETF document. That's our only choice other than a working group. All right. So uh, just since I uh, opened this question, I don't have much experience with the IETF process. I've really been focused a lot more in a, in a few narrow technical areas. So I can't really comment on what's a working group and what's an AD sponsored document. Then neither of them sounds particularly objectionable so long as it produces the kind of document under discussion. Okay, uh, appreciate it. For me, fine, whatever. Uh, and anybody uh, want to uh, raise? Yeah, uh, Rich, go ahead. Yeah, I have a clarifying question. I concern 
was raised about, oh, a working group is designed to produce output. Um, therefore, a working group isn't appropriate, but I thought if we're going an AD route, it would be to produce a document. So could you explain that difference? Yeah, I, I, well, and it, maybe Keith can talk to it better, but my interpretation is that working groups, because they have the formality that they do, go in with an assumption that they are going to output some document and, and whether or not the working group actually um, comes to a clean consensus, there is a push to get the document out. Whereas AD sponsored might not have that kind of um, uh, uh, bias. Uh, did I capture that correctly, Keith? Who might want to unmute? <laughs> Good enough. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I don't think there's okay, difference in, in actual form of what we're talking about, but that, you know, if we set up a mailing list, discuss this for a bit, um, it wouldn't be as, you know, heavily managed as uh, a working group because there wouldn't be an assigned chair. Turn this into some sort of principles document and basically four week, you know, last call it and say, if you have any objections to this set of principles, speak now or forever hold your peace. Where a working group would have a chair running the discussion and might have some bias to produce something, even if the working group really is saying, no, nah, nothing should be produced here. I just wanted to answer the question of would I be willing to do this? Uh, I throw my hat into the ring by writing this thing in the first place. Okay. I think I'm committed to this. I'm happy to do it. I do not want to be the only author on it. I would love to have other authors from a variety of viewpoints involved in this. Um, I don't think it is right to have it, it come from one particular viewpoint, given that we are trying to be inclusive here. So I, I would like to have certainly the authors of all three documents that led into this agreeing in this goal. Um, I think otherwise we're not going to find consensus. So I'm all right. I'm very um, happy to work with, with all the other authors and with anyone else. And I just want to make sure, uh, Andrew, that I got your cue uncued before, or did you have an additional comment? Uh, I had an additional comment. Uh, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll cheekily add, though, that if, uh, if, if other help is needed, as, as far as I'm able, I'll be happy to help with, with an effort. Uh, but, but the reason for, for, for wanting to just interject was um, I'm conscious that probably about 50% of the people on this call will have commented uh, on, the, on, on the mic. Um, and I think it'd be interesting to see whether any of the people that have, haven't commented to date have any strong feelings either, either way, um, or if they think it's really problematic to comment, because clearly that would be a, a useful learning point as well um, for this discussion. And I, I absolutely encouraged. Um, th there's an interesting double bind there, but yes, thank you. Uh, Bron, you had yourself in the queue, but did you uh, have an additional comment or? No, I think that's just what I said already um, was, yes, I'm, I'm happy to do the document. I'd like to work with, with ideally, a, a diverse set of authors on this. Excellent. Uh, Robert, you were up. So, uh, so I'm not opposed to going the AD sponsored route. Um, I don't, yeah, as I said, I'm not opposed to that, but I actually quite like your idea of having a quick spin up working group to do, to focus on this document and then to have a longer term mailing list. And my only reason for this, and maybe this isn't valid, is is one of perception that it feels like working groups are easier to find, see, and they turn up on the agenda and spot. Whereas things that are just mailing lists and AD sponsored, I, I feel are slightly more hidden. Uh, they don't, you don't see them on, on the ITF 109 agenda, et cetera, et cetera. So it just from a sort of inclusive perspective, I feel that having a working group is easier for people to see and know where this discussion is happening uh, and, and not to exclude people. As to your comment about does a working group mean that it has to produce a document, I, I think that could be part of its charter to say its charter is to investigate this, uh, to try and produce a document if, it, if it's possible, but equally a valid outcome for the working group would be to say 
uh, there should be no document here. So I, I think that, that would, from my perspective, would be an okay um, part of a working group charter. Interesting. Colin, you were up. Can you hear me? Yeah, just fine. Good. Um, so I certainly think there are um, some good points in Ron's document. Um, and um, I think it is written in a style that is quite familiar to a lot of people in this community. Uh, and I can see why um, people are perhaps uh, focusing on, on some aspects of it. I think one of the strengths of the document that Mallory and Niels wrote, which isn't reflected in the other documents, is that it recognizes that we have a broader issue with inclusivity in the IETF community. And building on some of the other documents, I would be concerned we would perhaps miss uh, that recognition uh, and focus too much on a very narrow focus on uh, particular terminology questions. So I would not um, think personally that Bron's document would be uh, the right starting point for this group. Thank you. Interesting. Um... I, I'm oh and uh, Victor you want you just put yourself in the queue go ahead right um, I just wanted to counter that comment in that it is specifically on inclusivity that I find draft Nodell to be exclusionary and offensive in in its terminology and its and its spin uh, so uh, while some may see it as a positive virtue uh, uh, I find it to be objectionable on many fronts and would not like to see it in any shape or form progress. Fair enough. Um, th this is, I, I'm, obviously, Francesca and I are going to have to go back through the notes. Uh, oh, uh, go ahead, uh, Mira, please. Everybody, I was I was struggling a long time if I want to contribute to this discussion or not, or if I can bring anything in that moves the discussion forward. Um, the point um, I'm a little bit disappointed about is, is that like writing any document won't help. What what will help is people change, people notice the problem, people caring about terminology, and having a discussion about this is hopefully the first step. Providing some recommendations is another step. Having a document about welcoming people, you know, it's nothing that will hurt, but I also don't think it will change anything. What will change is people raising the problem and people noticing it and then changing their behavior. Not sure if that helps the discussion for this specific document, but that's at least like my point of view for this discussion. No, appreciated. Going into the mix, um, Adrian. Yeah. So uh, thanks to Amelia for for saying um, something rather uh, important. Um, I wonder whether Pete, you feel the need to dispatch the documents or dispatch the topic? Because I, I hear us um, moving towards, well, we should found our work on this document or we shouldn't. Uh, and at the same time, or previous to that, we, we seemed to have said, yeah, we, we need to uh, have a document. And if you dispatch the topic, then the working group can um, sit down and work out what document it wants. If you dispatch the document, then you're kind of um, getting a jump on that working group. Yeah, I, and I, you know, I started this discussion and, and mentioned up at the top that, you know, we want to dispatch in general the topic and that the particular document was not essential. What I heard during this discussion was that people at least seem to be coming to consensus, it appeared to me, that dispatching something like Braun's document for the, the this particular principal case was making folks comfortable. Um, I do, I would like to dispatch the topic in general, and maybe that becomes something closer to 
what Mary is talking about is, you know, what, how do we get people to be more inclusive, et cetera. And, and the, a single document, maybe that's, you know, coming up with, uh, ways to promote that idea, but, um, yeah, I, I, I would love for there to be clear output on the whole topic. I'm, I'm not, I wasn't hearing it yet. So you may you may not um, be keeping up with the chat room. Uh, in, I, I'm trying <laughs> in, in WebEx, but there's there's a very quick um, exchange and plus ones etc. on just the idea of a broad inclusivity working group, which might pick up language issues as well, mm -hmm. um, and that would be an example of you dispatching the topic, not the documents. And I, I will mention that, you know, working group for that is one choice. Um, uh, IAB program for that is another choice. Uh, the, 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 there are loads of ways to go forward in that area. But yeah. Um, uh, also, also, an inclusivity working group would very much clash with the idea of a quick uh, so absolutely that would close so that's a different different proposal yes um uh, i saw someone else bron you uh popped into the queue there at some point it um if i wasn't clear enough before um i i absolutely agree with Miriam's points i i think it's important to have at least one of the authors well both the authors really of the other draft um, involved in this as well. Mallory obviously ticks more of the uh, inclusion boxes, but either way, we need to have them on board as well. Uh, otherwise, we certainly don't have consensus. They are yeah. people who cared enough to to make an effort in this. Um, if if we try and exclude them from the process, then we're definitely not reaching consensus amongst those who care here. Right. Um... Uh, even though they called your document reactionary, that's cool, right? Yeah, but I'm trying to form consensus, not to increase the fight here. Right. I, I would, I would like to find something that they are happy with, and that I am happy right. with, and the rest of the group's happy with. If, right. Good if luck. we can't reach that, we have problems. <laughs> yeah, that's what I signed up to do, right? I'm, tr I'm trying to find a consensus and a positive outcome here. Um, uh, regarding the specifics of the working group versus ad sponsored i don't have enough um i guess knowledge of, of what's going to work better there i leave it in your capable hands pete yeah <laughs> miri you wanted to jump back in yeah um so i think um one of the reasons why we don't make good progress here is because we're jumping into this general topic of inclusivity which is super important i think we all agree that we have a problem and we need to do something but it's very broad and I don't think we agree what exactly the problems are and what exactly the measures are we don't want to do. So I'm, I'm not sure if like actually having more discussions about this on a mailing list and working group or whatever, whatever will move us forward because it's very different angles which need, need different measures. Uh, we do have some things that addresses this already, which is, for example, the mentoring program to get new people in. Um, we have the ombuds team, which is an important part here and so on, but like it's, it's very broad. <laughs> um, so that's that's also why I'm a little bit um, disappointed about this discussion because like I'm a member of the ISG and when we put the statement out we actually thought that this part about terminology is like one specific small angle of the big problem that is easier to address and we can reach some consensus um, um, quickly uh, in the sense that you know people should just watch out for it they should be aware and then everybody individually as an author should should potentially consider this and change their behavior um, rather than needing like broad consensus about this. Um, so this is, but this is only one little piece of the puzzle, and I'm, as I said, I'm disappointed to see so much uh, controversial discussion about this already. But having a working group that tries to include everything about this broad topic will probably not work out any better than what we've seen so far. Yeah. Uh, John, I believe you queued next. Yeah, I'm. Uh... I, I, I had a comment after Brunt's comment, uh, and now I'm confused. Um, I, 
what part of what I'm concerned about here addresses a specific aspect of the inclusive of, in the inclusiveness issue, which is that we go down a path of looking at terminology in a way which itself becomes exclusionary. The comments about the initial draft which set this off are to a certain extent part of that discussion. Uh, it's, it, it's a broader issue, but I think we need to be very, very careful. And that's why I support Mercer's very original comments, but uh, uh, am not quite certain about her second one. Uh, but I think we're on the same page. All right, uh, Keith. Yeah, I actually think that, I mean, I, I don't want the outcome of this meeting to be let's let's recommend a inclusivity working group. I feel like that's a bit too soon and and there are some uh, potential perils there. I don't want to dismiss those. Uh, I do think that by starting with this with this language topic, which it might have seemed like low hanging fruit, but it might have actually created more controversy than necessary because there are so many more glaring ways in which IETF is not inclusive than that, that focusing on that topic might have actually kind of caused more heat than it otherwise would. Water under the bridge. Uh, I still think we have to address, because we've been talking about the language topic, that's, that's really what we need to address now. Uh, and so I'd like to sort of we see if we can settle on uh, picking bronze document as a starting point and moving forward with that. Uh, I I have some preference for a mailing list over a spun up working group, but I could be persuaded either way. Not that I'm the one that's making that decision. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that's uh, something that IESG would like to decide. But yeah, let's see if we can get that much uh, moving forward, and uh, then we can tidy up this meeting. We've got ten minutes left, Andrew. Uh, yeah, just sort of reflecting on the, some of the uh, comments just now. Um, I, I think if, if there were to be an inclusiveness working group, um, given that is a much bigger topic, uh, it should only be on the basis that, that this document, whatever it results, are, should be the first output from it. So it doesn't just get lost in a morass of a whole bunch of other stuff to be done. Um, uh, and also learning from the last document that was pushed out by the, the IES, IESG, I, I think it would should be a requirement that any output uh, on, on this document, and I still think bronze document is the right starting point, should be issued well in advance uh, of the next IETF meeting, because I think it was deeply unhelpful that the last document was issued a week beforehand to the mailing list when there's already plenty of other stuff for those of us that were focused on on uh, ITF 108 to, to be working on. Um, so that, that just showed a, perhaps a lack of knowledge of of the work that goes on before uh, a meeting. So having a milestone that has to be more than a week before the next meeting is important and that we shouldn't lose focus on the terminology um, so if there is to be an, uh, an inclusiveness working group, I personally think that would be a fantastic thing. But if that's to be the case, this should be the first output and it should be done in, in a timely manner um, and not lost uh, you know, to be done in a few years' time. I'm, I'm hearing... Thanks, I appreciate that. I, I'm hearing that people think we might be able to get a principal document on the language stuff done and that something bigger on inclusivity is a good thing in principle but maybe not something that we think we are ready to dispatch out to um i i mean i haven't heard real objection to having some sort of working group program whatever on inclusivity but that i'm i'm hearing a lot of objection to it, it being something we can dispatch right now am i am, does someone want to disagree with that assessment uh john you can jump in 
Uh, I don't know if it's disagreement or not, but my my view of the inclusivity problem isn't an issue of documents and what documents get produced in what order. Mm -hmm. Issue about whether or whether we are changing vocabulary or changing whether whether our primary target is to change vocabulary or our primary target is to change how people think about these things and behave, rather than as I say, but for specific documents we try to produce to uh, to to improve the ITF or perhaps humankind. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Mary. Um, we, the goal is here to change um, behavior, to change our culture, um, but this is not something that we will achieve by writing an RC. It's, what, it's, what, it's something that we can only achieve by people changing their behavior individually on small steps. And for me, actually, a recommending terminology and making people aware of that is one of those small steps. There are many more, right? But let's just writing it down in a document in an RFC doesn't help. Right. Um, so, but l let me ask you to stay at the mic for a moment. Uh, um, you don't have, do you have objection to going forward with? a document about the language issue, independent of whether we do other things to sort of promote the change of behavior. So I think I personally think that if we have a document about the language issue, it should very clearly state the problem and not to only talk about measures. I think that's important for the community to understand and to agree to. Got it. Uh, Bron, go ahead. I, I am struggling a little bit with this. Um, part of the issue here is that to get people to change individually, there's really two ways. There's pacing and leading, which is getting them on side first and then leading them to, to a better place. Um, or the alternative is pretty much to kick out the people who are not on board with the program. Um, you need to persuade people to change Otherwise, you are forcing them to change. And I think the forcing to change is something that particularly the Eastern Europeans were particularly concerned about by the way they saw this happen on the mailing list, where they were being told to behave differently because they're bad people. And I think this leads back to the bad dog problem that if you hit your dog and call it bad for doing the wrong thing, you will not get a well-behaving dog out of the end of it. Um, and so the path we need to follow to persuade the IETF to change is not going to be a top-down telling them to change. Uh, I don't think that will work. And so I'm looking for a path that persuades people, not a path that uh, tells people what to do, because I don't think that will be successful. It may get published, um, but I don't think it would change the behavior of the participants. Uh, Keith. Go ahead. Something I've observed in IETF for a long time is that when we get rough consensus, we get rough consensus on a decision. We don't necessarily have rough consensus on the motivation. And that's a really useful distinction. So if, we, if we're looking at language specifically, if we focus on if getting consensus around language guidelines, that's a lot easier than getting everyone to agree on the reasons for why we're doing this. So we, nobody has to agree, for instance, that we're doing this in order to overcome structural inequity that has been perpetuated by culture wars, whatever, whatever argument that you want to make, it's better if we don't have to go there because we'll never get consensus on that. Uh, because frankly, there's a real strong temptation for people to get religious about such things without pointing any fingers at anybody. So let's try to focus on the measures that we're going to pick. Even though I agree, in general, attitudes have to change, and that's what makes things you know, change broadly, but we can't tell people what attitude to have. That's probably not going to work. Area? We have three minutes left. Maria? 
Um, yeah, to, to reply to this one directly, I do agree. Like, it's it's super hard to uh, get agreement on the problem. We are better in, in a document and what the outcome is. But in this case, the only way for people to change is actually, you know, agreeing on the problem, accepting the problem. If we try to mitigate this and we just describe, you know, what we want, we don't, we don't solve the problem. And I mean, as I said, I don't think that the, that an RFC is the right instrument here. Um, but like, if you want to try an RFC, I think that that should be the goal, trying to actually tackle the problem. Keith? I emphatically disagree. I think if you want to create a, a nuclear explosion, that's the way to do it. I, it it's interesting because I, I, even as I heard Braun describe it, you know, describing that we want to be inclusive, the good thing, right? And, and had that as a principle of what he takes to be the document. D to a certain extent, th that implies the inverse, right? That by not using these, by not thinking about this terminology, you're being exclusive. And mm -hmm. that is a problem. And now, I, I mean, you can put it in, in the contrapositive, I, that, that's possible, but I, I'm, I'm wrestling with trying to get those things to match. Right, but but there's a difference between saying we want inclusivity and it's a good thing, and saying you're being exclusive in these particular questionable ways, and well, pointing uh, fingers at people and saying you are, you know, whatever. So uh, pointing fingers, racist, point, right? Pointing yeah. fingers, pointing fingers is always problematic, right? Uh, um, so, because then you're then you're again characterizing the motivations of particular individuals or, or the community. Well, at again, large. we want yeah. to avoid We want to avoid motivation. Mm -hmm. Right, and perhaps go in with the you know the assumption that people right. are trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that they are accomplishing doing the right thing, That's and saying right. that they are not accomplishing right. it mm -hmm. is okay. So I'm saying bronze document is good, and its contrapositive isn't, you know, the the logical equivalent. Uh, it is there's a difference. I'm comfortable with uh, we want to do better. Interesting. Um, oh, Bron, I, I didn't see you pop back in. Go ahead. Um, I have a question, I guess, for Miria and possibly for Juliana as well, um, which is, are you asking or requiring this document to say the IATF is currently bad and exclusionary and is using bad language? Because that is how it's reading. Um, and I think that is the thing that a lot of people object to. Uh, does does this document have to say we have used bad language in the past? We are using bad language now, in order to achieve the objective you're trying to achieve here. I, if either one of you want to jump in, go right ahead. I, I, and I, I mean, to say for myself, Bron, you know, the framing it as bad is already the leap, right? Framing it as um, langu language we've used has been exclusionary or hasn't been as inclusionary as it could be, I, I you know, those... I, I have a hard time distinguishing. Bad is, is, is you know, uh, 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 I don't know, o overly simplistic. But yeah, go ahead. So it? We are two minutes over time right now. So I think we need to conclude. Yeah. Um, the meeting. All okay. right. I, I, I mean, I, I hear what I, I think I hear what's going on uh, and uh, that uh, people think we can get a more positive sounding principles document on language, potentially, uh, with, with certain reservations out. Uh, I haven't heard a strong feeling about the forum 
that that happens in. I, I've heard some people like Keith want to say, let's just do a mailing list and be done with it. Others pushing more for a short lived working group. Um, and I'm definitely hearing that we want to address the bigger issue in some way. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll go, we'll go through notes, both uh, the Jabber and uh, WebEx chat and uh, Francesca's notes from the meeting and try and come up with a summary of all this and get it to the list. The next steps, we're gonna, you know, uh, we're going to try, Francesca and I are going to try to summarize this whole thing, get it up on the list, um, and we're going to look for specific points that we want to hear agreement or disagreement about and see if we can come up with a set of dispatches, both on the idea of a document and on the idea of future work um, in the larger area. Um, Francesca, any other final comments? No, I think it would be useful if people would go to the, um, uh, the to the minutes and try to read your your input if you remember what you said because I am sure I missed something. Um, <laughs> so that would be very welcome. Otherwise, and we yeah, would I agree with... yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I agree with uh, what you heard. I also heard the same. Okay. So we'll we'll try and capture everything from the chats and uh, bring those into the minutes as well, and we'll bring it to the list. And please do speak up on the list, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll. I I think we are honing in on ways forward here. I I I'm not worried that we've ended up in the where we began uh i think we actually do have some potential pads here but let, let's let us both summarize for the list and see if we can get those done all right we're four minutes over time thank you both uh, all for uh for participating and we'll get something out to you thank you bye bye have a good evening for those of you who are having an evening and day for the rest of us <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you.